Hi, welcome back to Back on Two Wheels. Um, okay, there's no video footage of any ride outs on this one. Um, I'll give you a little update. Um, basically, I had a had a ride out, but I didn't have any any way of uh, fixing the the GoPro and mounting it at the time. Um, since then, I've I've, I've literally just um, put some sort of mounting um, device on the bike. Uh, we'll have a look at it in a minute, and uh, I sh I'll show you where I put it. I'm not a hundred percent. In all fairness, um, the GoPro camera yeah, maybe sits a bit too high. Plus, it might be um, it might be in the way of. Uh, viewing the road effectively and obviously uh, safety is uh, paramount but I'll give it a, a little bit of a, a spin uh, tomorrow morning and then uh, we'll have a look and, and, and see and you can maybe give me some um, yeah, feedback on it see what you think um, and I'll let you know what I think at the time um, yes so uh, not yesterday. It was when was it? It was Sunday. Sunday I had a, a, a spin out. Today's Tuesday. Yesterday was my partner's birthday. So um and it rained. However, getting back to the bike, uh, so Sunday I went out for a, a, a spin on it, uh, East Midlands. Basically, we're looking at um, from where I am in Northamptonshire up to uh, Melton Mowbray and then across to Boston and then back home again. So, a couple of stops, a couple of coffee stops basically. Um, I've got to be honest, and no disrespect to the towns, I was literally just picking somewhere on a map. There, there, back. Um, yeah, maybe on a summer's day when there, when there's something going on, maybe worth a visit. There's probably things around there that are, that would that take you there. Uh, literally, I was just looking for somewhere as a route um, to try the roads. So uh, the roads were mainly A roads um, and single carriageway on the whole. So the roads were nice. Uh, lovely countryside. Um, the Midlands has got some lovely roads, lovely countryside. So, yeah, nothing, nothing to go wrong there. I will, um, I will stick a, a clip on of uh, of where I I went, um, which I got from the Triumph um, app, basically that goes with the bike. And you can put you. I use that as uh, my guiding system. Previously, I was using the um, iPad, the iPhone on a GoPro mount on the bike, and using the sat nav on that, which was which is good. Um, the benefit of that, I think, is you also get a view of the road, unless it goes dark. But you can tap the screen maybe and get the get the map back up again. But if you're if you're doing turns and things it it comes back up sort of fairly regular so you also get a bit of a lie of the land as to where you're expecting the roads to go and the, and the bends to come up and all the rest of it so um okay i will briefly speak about the um i won't call it an accident because well that wasn't intentional um I didn't hear anything or whatever other than the, other than the ground. Um, the only thing that's bruised is me, um, me the ego. Um, so anyway, as was briefly discussed on the last video, I did basically get the bike out of the showroom. They pushed it out for me, and I was sitting on it, messing around, gloves, you know, glasses off. Pop it in, in the pocket, fiddling the bag with the, like, oh no, oh no, you know, just messing around, getting myself ready for the off. And 
a couple of times I'd put the side stand back down, let it rest um, while I was doing zips up, doing this, doing that. And um, subsequently I'd, I think I was more or less ready for the off and I'd put my feet up on the foot pegs and forgot that I'd already taken the stand up. It started falling and basically it had gone over too far. By the time I'd got my foot down, it had gone over too far and I'm like, Whoa! on the side. So a couple of fellas um, that were standing next to me that I was talking to as well, embarrassingly. Um, yeah, so they, they basically uh, run to me rescue or took a side step to me rescue, would it, whichever, and um, helped me get the bike back up. Um, so uh, the shop staff from, from Pure Triumph obviously got it as well. I'm, I don't know if it's on their video. Um, I'd imagine for anyone watching it, it was probably hilarious. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I didn't have um, camera set up for anything like, you know, with me on it, ready for the off. Um, I would have shown it just purely because it's part of the, um, the experience, really. Uh, it's never... <laughs> it's never happened before and yeah so it happens you buy a bike first thing you do is drop it on the floor um hadn't even done one mile under my hadn't done anything hadn't even moved an inch under my um ownership so there you go so uh, moving on from that we had a, a nice ride out on sunday um i haven't uh, taken my partner on it we've, we've we bought her a, a crash helmet so she could be a pillion. She's never been on the back of a bike, I don't think. Um, it is a tall bike, and it's although it's five mil lower than the CRF that I had before, it's probably a slightly wider seat. So maybe I haven't got as much purchase on the floor as, as I had on that and it's obviously slightly heavier as well. So, although she's not been out on it yet, I'm sure eventually, um, whether it's before the end of the year or into next year, once I've, once I've got a bit more used to the bike, um, because obviously I, I need to be, I need to be happy with, uh, my own control of the bike, stopping and starting. I mean, when you're, when you're riding along, uh, really it doesn't matter what height it is. Um, but it's stopping and starting in traffic and under um, possible situations where you're having a break as opposed to you're slowing down and coming to a stop. So we'll, we'll get those, um, I'll get that all under control and Hopefully moving forward, uh, she may well be joining me on the bike. So um, the other thing uh, that I'll point out, it is still an issue. I parked in Melton Mowbray and, the, and the, it was a, a sort of like a paved area, but it did have a slope on it. And although, although it does sit lower, you need to be on the right side of that slope irrespective because it's it's too much going that way it's it, i didn't feel comfortable getting off i had to literally pull it up so i'm going slightly up the up the slope and then get off from there so we'll get there though things will become more natural the the, the further we go but i'll um i'll show you a couple of things on the bike that uh basically you know moving forward think um, we just need to be mindful. Oh, well, let me show you first. So this is the bracket. Okay. So 
the GoPro will sit effectively up here. I can get a bit of an angle on it, so we run it down towards the road, level it off because um, the, the screen itself is uh, a, a bit of an angle. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue with um, with my own uh, line of sight on the road ahead and the vehicles ahead. We'll um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anything this side? Nothing really. Let me just pop the ignition on there. So here we are. Isn't he? We've got the ignition on. Uh, no tiger. So this is the, the, the setup. Fuel's low. Well, I did have a. So I've used uh, best part of a tank. We still got the. Uh, it's all got fifty or miles there to go anyway. Um, I'll be popping out in the morning and grabbing some fuel, and uh, and that's probably when when I'll have the camera on. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, so moving around the other side. Here we go. So the first thing I will point out, and I've seen it on other other videos as well. It's been highlighted and. I was aware of it before I bought it, but the, the space between the indicators and the toggle is really, I think, if they'd thought about it and maybe put this one there and the indicator one just slightly higher, so there was a gap between the two, an obvious gap as opposed to very close, because if if we if we look at the dash there, you toggle and you toggle between various things. So we go back to the GPS. So it was set on this one uh, while I'm riding. So you might come up to a roundabout. You're indicating. So you indicate and your your thumb moves over, grabs what you think is the indicator, and does this. And then you, you you might do the indicate again, or you might even grab both. So you're indicating and moving the thing, and then you look down thinking, where's me, where's me sat nav gone? So then you've got, you know, obviously you've realised after I've done it a few times that it's just that I've toggled instead of indicated um, or both. So that might have been something to uh, consider. Um, there you are. With it's it is what it is. I'm sure I'll get used to it um, eventually. Uh, it's on the low seat. I don't know if it was. It was meant to be on the low setting. I'm pretty sure it is, but um, I will have to double check just in case I can get an extra twenty mil purchase on the floor uh, at stops. The other thing that um, with any other thing I'd need to mention maybe is um they've they put these these racks on but you can see down here the you know if i've got to get my foot in there to put it on the main stand now all right fair enough you you're probably unlikely to um let's just turn it off you're probably unlikely to oh look this isn't a garage by the way this is this is like a little office so i've got so I haven't got a fireplace in my garage, just so, just in case anyone's won. Um, so yeah, um, what can I say? You know, to try and get that at some stage when you, you know, I can get it like that one, but it's not a good, you know, and then you, you know, you don't really put it up with your left foot, do you? Or do you? Maybe I'll have to, um, just uh, practice more, but um, yeah, that was a that was possibly a, a little design flaw, if if you like, or you know they could have probably put this up and, and maybe even brought it up to something on the on the top here or something so that we got a different means of uh, a different means of support. Um, 
Yeah. What do you think? Do you think they could have done that differently? Put some comments down if you want. Yeah, so there we are anyway. So that was my, my first ride out. Um, I'll, I'll put one of the next one. Uh, it, it may be because I'm um, not always here. It may just be that uh, the ride outs initially are going to uh, have a few weeks break in between them. Um, just because I'm not in the UK all the time. And eventually it'll come out back out to Holland with me. Um, hopefully it will stay in my possession. It's got a, uh, ah, that's the other thing. It's got a tracker on it. Thank you to, uh, thank you to the guys at Pure Triumph, adding the tracker. Um, have I got a bike track? I'm not being sponsored by the way. It's just what it is. Uh, I, I guess my only, my only issue with that is it's got, it's got basically three options. You can have it so that if the bike moves, you get your notification. You can have it, um, if it moves more than a hundred meters, you get notified. Or you can put it into a service mode. So if you're going in, you're getting it serviced, they can expect it to be moved and, and whatever. You, you let them know beforehand. Um, so, what was it? it must have been Saturday afternoon. Yeah, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I popped out, I, I bought a bike home, I set it all up um, for the alarm. And then uh, nipped out to open the pannier to get something out of the pannier. Um, went back in, text message, email, phone call. Does your bike move? It's okay. So it's obviously that sensitive that if you've got the key, if you've got it in off on the ignition and you open your, you go open your pannier, then it will basically notify them, which is fine in the event of someone going into your pannier or trying to get into your pannier or anything else. However, when you stop, you're gonna to wanna to take the key out and open your open your pannier with your key, because you need your key to open the pannier. So to take the key out, it's off. To open your pannier, the thing's off, so it's effectively armed. I, I will have to check up just in case they do give um, a, a bit of time between you taking the key out, you know, for you to sort of get your crap together. Yeah, because normally you might take the stuff off, put your crash helmets in, that's all time. Um, you don't want to be phoned up every time you, you stop somewhere. Um, and I'd prefer it to be on move rather than the geo one where someone's going to have it half, 100 metres up the road and you've got to be Usain Bolt to catch them. So with that in mind, I would have thought that they might have had just literally a an arm and a disarm, sort of like if you if you have um, a, a system at home, you can walk out, you can basically say, you know, arm, disarm. So if you're going in, you can disarm your alarm before you walk in the door. So it's not gonna pick you up and send bells and whistles halfway down the street. So maybe something along them lines might have been um, also a feature of the, the app that comes with the uh, security bike track system um, other than that obviously no no fault they phoned me up and uh, let me know I you know I had both I had a or well, free text message and email and then a, and then a phone call with it must have been within 20 seconds or something of, of me going in there so there we are Okay, so that's uh, that's really where we are at the moment. I'll um, I'll post this today's Tuesday. Um, 
but maybe I'll edit it and uh, and get it out to you tomorrow night. Um, hopefully tonight. You never know. So um, we'll see. Stay safe and um, that's it. Basically, enjoy till the next one. Bye.